Now, from Wish TV, your local news source, this is All Indiana Politics. And welcome to All Indiana Politics on this Sunday morning, just days after an election that saw an estimated 3 million Hoosiers cast ballots, a record for the state. And for Republicans in the state, it was a very good night overall. The GOP will keep control of all statewide offices in Indiana. Governor Holcomb will get four more years as governor, defeating Democrat Woody Myers in a race that was called mere minutes after the polls closed in central time zone counties. Holcomb got the most votes for any candidate for governor in the state's history, topping the mark set by Mitch Daniels' re-election bid in 2008. Let's get busy by showing that civility is way more productive than civil unrest. My friends, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's get busy building one Indiana for all. God bless and good night. Another top Republican win, Victoria Sparts in the 5th Congressional District. She held off Democrat Christina Hale in a race that was finally decided more than 24 hours after polls closed. It's very emotional for me. <laughs> when I came here 20 years ago, I could never imagine. Uh, but I believe this is the beauty of our republic, that through hard work, determination, people put trust in you. And it doesn't matter where you come from and which background you have. We're a country of ideas and ideals and hard work, and I'm very, very humbled and honored to represent people for this district. National Democrats had hoped to pick up that seat as Susan Brooks retired to pad their majority in the U.S. House. Indiana Republicans also able to pick up four seats in the state House of Representatives, expanding their supermajority. Brooke, thank you. Meanwhile, Democrats in Indiana have one victory to celebrate inside the state's borders. Democrat Fatty Kadora knocked off incumbent Republican John Ruckel's house for state Senate District 30, which covers parts of Indianapolis. Kadora will be the first person of the Muslim faith to serve in the General Assembly. He's with our Alexis Rogers. Let's start with this, Fatty. My goodness, what a week <laughs> it has been. Let me know your reaction to learning you had become the first Muslim elected to the Indiana State Senate. And what message do you think that it sends to Hoosiers out there to have someone of your faith elected to public office and doing it by beating an incumbent Republican? Well, I really appreciate you. I'm extremely honored of my faith and who I am and my background. Uh, I came to the United States as an immigrant at the age of 19 and became homeless after Hurricane Katrina. So I'm excited not because of my faith, not because of my background. I'm excited because I'm energized and I want to serve our community to be sure they don't go through the same challenges that I personally went through in my my life when I was after Hurricane Katrina, when I was homeless after the hurricane. Um, it is an honor to be elected. It is an honor to be elected with the background that I have to send a message that in Indiana, you are welcome, you belong, you are loved, regardless of who you are, where you came from, or your political views, or your gender, or your faith, or your you know, social and economic status. Indiana is a loving and compassionate state. It is the state where the American dream can be achieved. If you have the heart to serve our community and you work extremely hard, and your intentions are sincere about what you're trying to accomplish, then Indiana is the state to allow you to do that. And I'm honored, I'm excited, and I look forward to serving our community. You know, Fatty, when it comes to your story, being an immigrant and being elected this year, especially with all of the different things that President Trump has said uh, during this election cycle and during his presidency, how does that factor into how you feel about this win? To be uh, to be honest with you, it actually one, was one of the motivations why I decided to run because I felt that our community and our nation is divided and politics is so polarizing that people uh, view one another as us versus them. And when our country goes through difficult times, we need voices that unite us, voices that bring us together as one community, as one loving, compassionate community. We are better together when we work with one another, when we look after each other to be sure that the well-being of our families, the well-being of individuals, of small businesses is the center focus of our political system so that our society is prosperous. Uh, these are very challenging and difficult times. Um, I'm personally not interested in the cynical politics. I'm interested in spending every ounce of energy I have 
to bring people together, to unite us as a community, to be sure that our solutions do not leave anyone behind. Before I let you go, your win comes in a very tough election year in Indiana for Democrats. What can you hope to get done in the legislature this next spring, and what can state Democrats do to broaden their election appeal? Absolutely. I did not run to be the, the senator for the Democrats in Senate District 30 or the Democrats for the state of Indiana. I ran because my life story taught me a few lessons and those lessons influenced my journey and who I am and what I stand for. And regardless of anyone's political affiliation, my dedication is to our community. I respect every single member of our community, regardless of their political affiliation. What I will focus on over the next four years is working with my colleagues from the Republican Party, Republican senators and Democratic senators to focus on these major challenges that are facing our communities. Um, hunger does not know political affiliation. Uh, not being able to pay your utilities or when your small business shuts down, that does not you know, get impacted by your political affiliation. We need unifiers, consensus builders, and folks who can bring people together to unite us as one community. So I look forward, I'm excited to work with my Republican colleagues and my Democratic colleagues at the Senate to advance our family's agenda in Indiana. Fatty Kadora, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an honor, thank you so much for having me. Well, coming up, counting every ballot cast in the United States. The new bipartisan group of former White House and congressional leaders pushing to protect election integrity. We talked to one of Indiana's members of the group coming up next on All Indiana Politics. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics, a new national bipartisan group calling for every vote in this election to be counted. That group is the National Council for Election Integrity. The group is pushing that message that American voters decide elections, not the candidates themselves. It includes two former members of Congress from Indiana Republican Senator Dan Coats and Democratic Representative Tim Romer. And we welcome in former Indiana Congressman and Ambassador Tim Romer. Tim, thank you very much for taking some time. Uh, so the count to every vote campaign calls for every vote cast in the U.S. to be counted in the presidential race, I understand. Yeah, we're called, uh, Phil, the National Council on Election Integrity. We are a group comprised of 44 people, uh, Democrats and Republicans, evenly split. Some people that work for Trump, like Dan Coats. Some people as Republicans that uh, are neutral and some that end uh, endorse Joe Biden. People like Lee Hamilton from Indiana, Leon Panetta, former defense secretary, Chuck Hagel, a former Republican defense secretary. We've all come together to say three things. First of all, patience. Let's count every vote. Every state law demands that every vo voter's voice be heard. Secondly, peace. Do not violently protest any of these election centers or results. And thirdly, let the constitutional process play out so that at the end of the day, we can accept the winner, whoever that might be, and transition to a new government or maintain the current government. Let's let democracy speak. Let our republic be the leader of the free world to the rest of the world. So that begs the question, Tim, the president and his campaign now calling for vote counting to stop or pause in some areas. Does that, does that threaten election integrity? No candidate should be able to call uh, an election when they want to do it. Uh, we, we, you know, in Indiana, we have four quarters of basketball. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we don't let the coach stand up in the third quarter and say, hey, it's done. I'm ahead on the scoreboard. It's all over. Pennsylvania, by law, requires voting uh, to be counted for three days after the election. So, yeah, that disturbs us, whether it's Biden or Trump saying that. Uh, uh, the most important bedrock principle in our country, because we're all so divided these days between Democrats and Republicans, is that our voice matters. Our vote is our voice. Let these voices be counted so we know how to go forward in the election. Don't stop it prematurely. Don't cry fraud when there's no susceptible frog out there. 
let's let the process play out. Former Indiana Senator, as you mentioned, Dan Coates, also on the committee. He says electoral legitimacy is the essential linchpin of our entire political culture. Your thoughts? Uh, I couldn't agree more with Dan Coates. In fact, uh, I was one of the people that reached out to recruit him to the National Council on Election Integrity. You know, Dan and I, we disagree on many policy issues. We are a thousand percent together on this one that uh, protect our republic, uh, be the leader of the free world for free elections and fair elections, make sure that people's voices are heard, rather wh whether it's in rural uh, LaPorte County and Northern Indiana or in the city in Evansville, uh, everybody deserves their voice to be heard and counted and uh, let this process play out. We have a couple minutes left and I, I appreciate your time. Uh, how do you answer those, Tim, who say that mail-in voting is ripe to allow for voter fraud? That's just not true. It's not accurate. Uh, all, both parties say that. I know the president occasionally will say something differently, but uh, there's no proof of that. Uh, every now and then I was on a show with somebody that day and said, well, my father-in-law's ballot got sent to the wrong address. And so was it voted? No. Uh, did it prevent him from voting? No, he got a new one. So the allegations out there don't mean that there's fraud. And that, there, you know, sometimes we all have problems when we go in to vote. They say, what's your address? Let me see the signature here. And there's small glitches. We have not seen any major uh, accusations of legitimate fraud out there. Final let's, no, let's, let, let's salute the American people, the volunteers, the poll workers, yeah. our neighbors that are out there making this process work forward. Um, elections are miracles. Yeah, democracy at its best, no doubt about that. One more question for you. Beyond this election, uh, Tim, what needs to be done to improve elections in, in 2022 and, and 2024 and even beyond that? We should take a very close look at that, Bill. That's an excellent question. Uh, we should probably put, as Dan Coates and I are advocating, a national commission together with judges, with Democrats, Republicans, business leaders, media leaders, how do we fix our elections so that they are honest, transparent? Uh, state laws uh, work even better than they currently do. What do we do to inspire more civic education in our schools so our kids know about our history and about how our governing process works? Uh, do we, uh, what, what do we do in our Kiwanian clubs and our Rotary clubs to inspire more patriotism and people having conversations with each other uh, about tough issues so we come together as a country. That's only gonna happen in places like South Bend and Mishawaka and Fort Wayne, and it's not gonna be mandated by people in Washington. We have to start coming together, talking to one another, respecting each other, and getting things done for the greatest country in the world, America. Fingers crossed. Ambassador Tim Romer, thank you so much for taking some time, sir. All right, sir, thank you for the time. And coming up, what did we learn from Tuesday's voting? And what happens next in Indiana? Our political experts join us to talk about that next on All Indiana Politics. And welcome back to All Indiana Politics on this Sunday morning. It's time for us to welcome in two of our favorite political experts. Kip Tu is a former chairman of the Indiana Democratic Party and Whitley Yates the Director of Diversity and Engagement for the Indiana Republican Party. Good to see you both. And Kip, I want to start with you. Uh, aside from the results at the top of the ticket, w what are your thoughts on the rest of the election, specifically statewide? Oh, thanks, Bill. You give me the hard question right, right off the bat. <laughs> uh, I kind of wanted to talk about the top of the ticket, not the rest of the ticket. We'll Look, get to that. Hoosier Democrats did not have a good day. I don't think there's any way uh, to, uh, you know, put frosting on that cake. Um, we did not do well, um, and it's very disappointing. I think there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk inside Democratic Party circles about what's next inside our party. Um, you know, uh, the the top of the ticket, uh, Donald Trump, only dropped a couple of points off of what he did in, in 2016, and I think all of our pollsters. Uh, on our side uh, didn't predict that, didn't see that, and our down ballot races in the polling that I was um, seeing didn't see it as well. So it was a pretty big surprise to all of us. 
Whitley, what about you and Republicans? Well, Same question. Let's be honest, it wasn't a surprise to us, obviously. The pollsters and the pundits got it wrong. Indiana has had strong Republican leadership uh, from the state house for 16 plus years and will continue to have that, not only with the gains that we made, but of course, retaining the governor's office, the AG's office, and all of the other races. I think that the failed leadership from the Democratic Party is what led to uh, the failed races in the campaigns. So Whitley, I have to ask you, um, was this election more of an indictment on President Trump than the Republican Party? I wouldn't say that, actually. I think what you're seeing across the nation um, is that the Senate was also retained. So I don't think that necessarily that's what that means. And honestly, at this point, we don't really know. Kip? Well, I don't think it's determined uh, who's going to control the Senate at this point. I think uh, uh, if current trends um, play out, we're going to have two special elections in the state in the state of Georgia to decide uh, who will control the United States Senate. Uh, we won the presidential race in Georgia, so I think that there's, we have a shot at both of those seats, and if that happens, then we will control the United States Senate. But, you know, apart from that, I do think uh, uh, that uh, Donald Trump was uh, taken out of office, uh, lost the race because he was Donald Trump. Okay, Kip, we'll stay with you for a second because you mentioned it kind of at the top that things are changing here in the Democratic Party in our state. John Zodi announced on Friday that he will no longer be the, the chair of the DNC here in the state. Your thoughts? Well, I think he, he made, uh, you know, the best decision for himself. Uh, John's a, a good person, uh, but I do think it's time for new leadership at the top of the party, and I think he agrees. And, and so we're going to have ourselves a, a hearty debate inside the Democratic Party about where we go uh, in the future. It'll be, I think, interesting for those of us who are close to the party. Having been a state chairman myself in the past, I have an idea as what it takes to be a successful state chair. Not that I particularly was, but I know the kind of people that uh, I think I want to see leading our party, and we're going to have that debate. Whitley, what about you folks in the Republican Party statewide? Well, needless to say, we're glad to see Zodi leave. Um, he wasn't the type of leader that we needed. We can look at the gubernatorial race and the Woody Myers campaign, the failed Woody Myers campaign, to kind of correlate that leadership. And the truth of the matter is the Democratic Party has needed an overhaul in Indiana for a long time. And so it's good that with this tremendous loss that we're finally getting it. Whitley, uh What's next for, for Vice President Mike Pence? That's such a good question. Yeah. I don't know what 2024 holds for him. Um, I could definitely see him as a presidential candidate in 2024. Okay. All right. You heard it right here. What about you, Kip? What do you think? Well, I'm afraid he's going to be uh, quailed, uh, for lack of a better phrase, and that is, uh, you know, Dan Quayle was a one-term vice president from Indiana, and, and Mike Pence uh, uh, may not have the opportunity. He'll probably float out that he'll want to run. But I, I hope that the, the Republicans will move away from the politics of Donald Trump. And unfortunately for Mike Pence, he's tied at the hip to those politics. Uh, he, he, it'll be left. interesting. Sorry, it'll be interesting. Right. It'll be interesting to watch to see if he tries to separate himself. I have about a minute left for both of you, so I just want to get your final take, um, your thoughts on the past week, Kip. Uh, you know, I think that uh, democracy was saved. I, I think Donald Trump was attempting to uh, end democracy and run an autocracy, and, and we saved the republic, and it's great. Whitley? Uh, what I'll say about the last week, wow, it feels good to be a winner. It feels good to have strong leadership in the state house and um, at the, in the governor's mansion. I think we are riding this red wave and we will continue to ride the red wave. We'll continue to provide the leadership that Indiana needs to build one Indiana. Will we know who the next president is before the end of the month? Real quick, yes or no, Kip? We already know, it's Joe Biden. Okay, Whitley? I'm not sure if we will know. I think we need to back off and back up and let the democratic process and democracy let us know instead right. of us telling it what's going to happen. That was more than a yes or no, Whitley. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Always good to see you. More news coming Thank up. You, Thank you. Thank you for joining us for All Indiana Politics on this Sunday morning. Very busy Sunday morning. We'll be back here next Sunday morning at 930. You can also listen to us anytime by downloading the All Indiana Politics podcast. It's part of the All Indiana Podcast Network. That's over on wishtv.com. 
Have a great rest of your weekend. Remember, any updates coming in on the presidential election and any political news over on wishtv.com. Have a great Sunday.